provost, invited guests and colleagues. As Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all here this evening for the inaugural lecture of one of our most eminent and outstanding professors, Professor Orla Shields. Orla is the director of the Trinity Translation Medicine Institute, more commonly known as TTMI, and professor of molecular diagnostics and director of medical ethics of the School of Medicine, and she's a fellow of Trinity College. She's a PhD in molecular pathology from Trinity College and an MA in medical law and ethics from King's College London. And she's very much recognized internationally as a key opinion leader in the area of novel molecular diagnostics, playing a central role in a variety of global consortia and acting as a scientific advisor to several biotech partners and influencing national and European policy. I am absolutely delighted to see such a big crowd here tonight. This is a very important event and I particularly want to welcome so many family members and friends of Orla. I'm particularly pleased to welcome Orla's husband David, her brother Eamon and unfortunately her brothers Niall and Rory can't be with us here tonight. I also want to welcome Orla's sister-in-laws Barbara and Denise her great niece Leah and other family members. Um, I know that Ro uh, Niall is unwell and, and Rory is out of the country. I would also like to welcome so many friends, many friends who I've spoken to over the past couple of days, spends from all his, not only her work colleagues, but certainly her musical and other interests. People like Andrew, Eric, Margaret, and far too many for me to mention. But I want to thank you for all your assistance and support to me as I say a few kind words about our dear colleague, Orla. And just to say, for those of you who are not familiar, that inaugural lectures are, form an important part of an academic's career here at Trinity College. And they're a formal way for the faculty to welcome our newly uh, appointed professors and to celebrate the achievement of our esteemed professors. And they provide an opportunity for the professor to showcase their academic activity, as well as providing Trinity and our partner hospitals with the forum to highlight some of our brightest talents. And Professor Orla Shields, I think we'll all agree, is certainly that. And at Trinity College, inaugural lectures are a ceremonial occasion, which is why academic robes are worn by somebody like myself and the, or the, the platform party. And the, it, this is not only, an inaugural lecture is not only an important event for the person themselves, but it is an occasion of immense pride and joy for Orla's family, and from her, for her friends who have journeyed with her and supported her in achieving such great heights. I am particularly pleased to host this evening's inaugural lecture here at St James's Hospital. As a Faculty of Health Sciences, we strive to maintain strong relationships between the Trinity campus and our partner hospitals, where so much of our clinical teaching takes place. Our linked hospitals, partner hospitals, play a vital role, not only in patient care, but in the provision of clinical education at both postgraduate and undergraduate level. And Orla is really a shining example of what we are trying to achieve as a faculty. And in collaboration with our partner hospitals, she has demonstrated extraordinary leadership in her role as director of TTMI. She leads an exclusively health sciences focused educational and research centre embedded within one of the largest teaching hospitals in the country. A TTMI strategy of improving human health through translational research is predicated on clinical, laboratory based and health service research informed by real world clinical bedside problems while addressing societal and global healthcare challenges. And professorial posts such as Orla's are critical to the building and enhancement of the ongoing synergistic relationship between and across our institutions that are centre to such work. In research, Orla, in her singular objective of using clinical research 
to advance human health works to understand the causes and the molecular basis of the development of disease with particular reference, which is particularly pertinent to Trinity's agenda around the whole area of cancer, and to apply this knowledge to improving disease prevention, detection, diagnosis, diagnosis and treatment. And she has demonstrated stellar leadership in developing novel molecular diagnostics and translating this research into clinical services and responses. And it was very clear from early in Orla's career that her name was always going to appear in life. Tireless curiosity supported her ambition to develop molecular techniques that could be applied to routine laboratory specimens. And I am aware of the mentorship that she has had from colleagues such as Professor Eamon Sweeney and Professor John O'Leary. But from the beginning, her career was marked with recognition such as her being the recipient of the Young Researcher Award at a high EU level scientific conference in Bonn in 2000. And in 2004, her research laboratory was designated a reference laboratory for applied biosystems. So we all can understand why Orle is being bestowed with this, with this great honour tonight. Through her research, Orla, Orla has uncovered pivotal mutations descriptive of several solid tumours, including thyroid, cervix, oval, ovary, colon, neck and head and lung. And she's now playing and contributing in a critical way to Trinity College and St. James's ambition to de develop jointly a comprehensive cancer institute. So this is really, really important work. And teaching, as we all know in this room, plays a major role for all academic professors. And here again, Orla has demonstrated excellence. Her commitment to students was recognised when she was invited to become the president of the 134th session of the Biological Society of Dublin in 2008. And in 2010, 12, she was awarded the Provost Teaching Award in recognition for a pioneering approach to teaching medical students and medical ethics, and plays a pivotal role in this across the university. But amidst all of her academic and professional achievements, Orla has a wide range of other interests. First and foremost is her family, particularly her husband Davis, and her brothers and extended family. I managed to speak to Rory before he left for Mexico last night, and um, he, he spoke about Orla in glowing terms. And Orla is the youngest of a family of four and blessed amongst men. She's the only daughter. But he, he described her as the glue that keeps the family together. Her care, he particularly really commented and, and wanted me to say about Orla's extraordinary care for her parents during their later years was outstanding. And the way that Orla very much even sacrificed her own life in, 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 in making sure that their needs were totally taken care of. And as I spoke with her, her, her choir friends, they also spoke about this. Um, and uh, I know that Orla has been in a choir, I'm told, from she could literally speak, so from two. <laughs> um, but when I spoke with her choir friends, they also spoke about this kind selfless and compassionate person and we all know that there was a very important choir performance happening somewhere down in the country and and and, and they really commented on Orla taking her mum to be with her in that hotel so as that you could keep watch up and down during the performance this attests to the caliber of the actual true person that Orla really is and I think this type of person and this has carried through to her work on her everyday work here at Trinity and at St. James's. And work colleagues that I spoke to talked about Orla as this very extremely bright individual, somebody who's just a mindful of ideas, the problem solver, somebody who is just so generous with her time, a wonderful mentor to junior colleagues, somebody who's just so giving. And one colleague that I spoke with last night, who is no longer in Trinity, said, his, well, I quote, I cannot speak more highly of this woman. I would not be where I am today without her. Her breadth of knowledge is stunning. She is kind and giving with this knowledge. 
And on a personal note, I also got to know Orla very well over the past number of years in my role as faculty dean. And Orla was the type of person that you could always pick up the phone to, you could always call, she was always there. She, Despite how busy she is, and I know she's always busy, nothing was ever too much. She would just support you. And Orla, I, on a personal note, I want to say how grateful I am for that. And for all of you, and many of you here know Orla for many years and extremely well, you also know that Orla is an incredibly funny person. And people have described her as someone with just a wicked sense of humour and a bit of a chatterbox. And when the chatterbox story, and I spoke with, with some people, particularly our choir friends, about this, and, and uh, the business and the choir, and I'm not musical myself, but I do know that um, we're all familiar with the student, you know, who's busy trying to get from the front row. And, we're very few people in the front rows here, uh, and, and, and move to the back row. Um, and they're not often moving to the back row, of course, because they want to see the lecture and they want to hear what they're saying clearer. Um, we all know often why people decide they want to move, perhaps down a bit. And Orla has been striving for many years to get from the front row of the choir back and our friends talked at, about this at great length and in the choir though we all know that this is done by height and despite Orla's best efforts to get into six inch heels she never managed to meet the height criteria to move from the front row so her chat and her humor I'm told keeps getting into trouble everyone around her and she also has I'm told a great fascination for cardboard box boxes so if there's any big delivery coming watch out that Orla is probably in the corridors in the wings wondering and um, also she has a it's, it's found to, to to hide in these boxes and there's a major search out a uh, uh, with by Professor Sweeney when they were working in the old SPD looking for Orla on one occasion but she was in the room beside him in the cardboard box and was there for a very long and extended period of time and couldn't get out. So this is Orla, the other side of Orla. Um, uh, she also has a great love for animals and I've seen multiple pictures of her beautiful cats and of horses and uh, was even known as the Red Gap Butler, I learned, Orla. So you know what that's about, and I, I won't tell everybody, okay? And uh, her, David uh, described her very much as, you know, Dr. Doolittle, you know, go for a walk with Orla, and she's chatting to every animal and everyone she meets. But it's only recently, as I spoke to colleagues and friends in preparation for this, that I became aware that there must be some type of close allowance here in TTMI, and extensive rumours that there's no bother for Orla to spend as much as a thousand euro on an outfit. Well, I, I'm happy to see I can confirm that story as I've had the pleasure to travel with Orla and enjoyed many shopping trips. Um, I also know that her office is a haven of goodies and other colleagues told me that you can't have a counselling session with Orla without eating a pile of biscuits and bringing away a handful in your pocket. So there's a constant stream of people, I'm told, to Orla's office. And people said, the ultimate colleague. And again, and just to conclude, I think, thinking again of Orla's interest in music and singing being such a major part of her life, I really am looking forward to our presentation tonight. And I feel we could be in even for a little bit of a musical treat as part of this presentation and I've no doubt it's, it's going to form no small part of the presentation we're about to hear. So for a great colleague and a really esteemed professor it gives me great pleasure. Any further ado I want to hand over to the woman herself, Professor Orla Shields.